In Acumatica 2021 R2, you can now receive stock items directly to projects. Now prior to 2021 R2, you had to choose, am I a stock item? If so, then I have to go through a warehouse. Or I can use a non-stock item, then I can go directly to a project. But I couldn't do both. I couldn't have an item that maybe sometimes goes into a warehouse and sometimes goes directly to a project. Now there was a workaround. You could use a sales order and some automated schedules and create a warehouse specifically for projects, but it was really messy. Now in 2021 R2, it's really clean. So let's take this project as an example. I've got my project up here, and I'm gonna copy that to my clipboard. Then I'm on the cost budget tab, and I'm gonna scroll down here to this line. Now I've already done a couple transactions here. That's why you see this default description. It created this automatically. I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Um, but you can see right now, I've got an actual amount of $10 on this line for project task two and account group material, $10. So let's go over to the purchase order screen. And this is what's new in 2021 R2, this project dropship type. This did not exist before 2021 R2. So I can come in here, choose a project dropship, choose any vendor I want. I'll use, I'll just use my first one. Actually let's use Here's one that doesn't have customer in the name. And I'll paste my project in here. And even though it might not make sense for this project, I'll use my Acer laptop. Just because I'm familiar with this item, I know it's a stock item. It's not going to do any extra stuff like lot tracking. It's just a basic stock item. So I'll add that with a quantity of one. And let's scroll down here and move over populate the project task of two. And I already verified that this account, this GL account, is mapped to the material account group. So by putting in two material account group, I'm expecting my cost to land in this $10 field right here. Back to the purchase order. Let's save this. Let's remove the hold and let's enter the PO receipt. Now this looks a little funny down here. I think this is probably because it's a required field. That's why they have to put something here. So you might think it's going into a warehouse, but you'll see in a couple minutes here that it's not. But that does look a little funny. I'm not gonna create the bill right away. Let's just save this. Uh, let's make sure that we have our receipt quantity. We do right here. We're receiving one directly to the project. Now, I did forget to point something out here. Let's go back to the purchase order. And I want to point out that because it's a project dropship, the shipping address defaults to the project address, which is really nice. And there's even this new shipping destination type that says project type, uh, project site. So I'm not shipping it to a warehouse. I'm shipping it to 17th Street in Philadelphia, which if I go to the project and look at the summary, is 17th Street in Philadelphia, the project address. So that's pretty cool. I like that. That'll print on your PO paperwork. Back to the receipt, let's release this receipt. Now for a normal purchase receipt, when we're going into inventory, you would then see an inventory transaction right here on the other tab. There's no transaction here, and this is actually consistent with how Acumatica processes regular drop shipments. I think it's a little weird, but I can see how they're wanting to be consistent. I would want this to hit the project right when I do the receipt, but it doesn't do it during the receipt. The receipt's just an authorization now for the AP bill. And just to verify that, if I come back to the project, you can see the $10 there. If I refresh this, it's still $10. No cost has been added to our project. In fact, no journal entry, no GL entry has happened at all yet. This is just an authorization for now the AP bell step. But it's still really nice that I just went from PO to receipt to AP bill. I didn't have to involve a clunky sales order workaround. All right, so we've got our AP bill. And you know, I haven't even tried this yet. Let's give this a try. 
I assume we could change the cost on the fly here. And this should be what hits the project, but let's find out. So let's say we had a variance that came in on the AP bill, but it's within tolerance, so we're okay with it. We get a warning there, but we're okay with that. And then we also get a warning here because we don't have anything left on our budget. Now I'm gonna talk about that more in a minute here. But uh, these are just warnings, so I should be able to remove the hold and release the AP bill. So that's done. If I come back to the project and refresh, we can see $280. So it was $10, it's now $280. So it looks like the $270 is what went on to the project, exactly the AP bill amount, not the amount from the purchase order. That allows me to correct it if there is a slight difference on the AP bill. All right, so I love that. I think it's great that now you have the ability to take a stock item directly to a project without having to do a weird uh, sales order workaround and flow the thing through a warehouse. And just to confirm that on this inventory item, let's open this up and let's take a look at the inventory transaction details just to prove that you can see in this period, this inventory item, there are no inventory transactions. We bypassed inventory completely, even though this is, if I open this up just to prove it, this is a stock item that normally wants to track inventory. So really cool there, I like that we're able to bypass it. Now a comment about back here, the fact that this landed, when I did this the first time, I did this before rec recording the video, this line actually did not exist. This came in and it, it said, it might have been default in caps, I can't remember now, but it created this line, even though there was no budget, it needed to show the line so it could show the actual amount. Now what I originally wanted to do is I wanted to add the cost down here to this mech rough-in line. I wanted to increase the actual amount here. But I don't see a way to do that. Now I might be missing something, but I could only see a way to choose the project task and the account group back on the purchase order. If we open that up, let's take a look at the purchase order. You can see down here, I was able to choose the project task, the account group, the GL account then goes to an account group, but I don't see anything else along here or up here on the top of the grid that would allow me to choose a specific cost budget line. Now, I might be missing something here, but as far as I can tell, it's kind of unfortunate that you can't choose that. But again, I might be missing something there, uh, and I hope I am. But still, overall, really cool that you can do this new project dropship type on a purchase order, bypassing inventory with a stock item, and going directly to a project.